Hi guys, this is lesson four, part three, I'm a, and I'm on step three. We've already completed page four slash 22, which is simple compounds, and then we're going to move on now and do four slash 23, and that is the compound path effect. So page 423 of your book says open four slash eight and save it as compound path effects. So I'm going to scroll down to 4.8 and click on it, click over here, hit open, and it's going to open it in Illustrator, and then you need to go to File, Save As. Make sure that you are not, it's going to default to your downloads. I've told you guys this before, but it defaults to your downloads, so you need to make sure you click on either your Google Drive or your H Drive, wherever you're saving your work, and go to save your work. Okay, so... I've saved it as compound path effects in my lesson four, my illustrator book lessons, and hit save. Hit OK. Number two of your book. Let me blow this up for you a little bit so you can see it better. Select all. So you click on select and then go to all. The light blue square is locked and does not become part of the selection. Click object on the menu bar. Point to compound path down at the bottom and then make. That gets rid of the yellow. Deselect, so you can deselect by going to select, deselect, or you can just click on your selection tool and then click in the gray area by deselecting everything. Click on your direct selection tool. Second one down. Okay, this is a step where people mess up on all the time, so it's important that you do this. Um, you're really precise in how you do this. So with your direct selection tool, click the edge of the circle. Watch this, guys. When you hover over, you can see that you come in contact with the path. You know that you're in contact with it, and you're going to click just that very, very edge. Okay, then the next thing you're going to do is you, right now, if you look at this, technically the only thing that is selected is this path, which is a part of the entire object. But we need this object to have to, everything to be selected. So your book wants you to click the exact center. So click on that, see that center point? You're going to click on that exact center point. Once you do that, all four of your anchor points are now filled in. So click that exact center point of your blue circle. And now you're going to double click your scale tool in your tool panel. Double click that scale tool. Enter 50% under uniform. So click on uniform. And then Type 50 and hit OK. This is what your project should look like. Click Select on the menu bar. Do not deselect. Click Select on the menu bar and then point to Inverse. So right now we have the five small circles selected. Click Object on the menu bar and then point to transform and then transform each transform each click enter 225 in the horizontal and vertical text boxes 225 225 And the scale selection of the transform each dialog box. All right. And then hit OK. Using the direct selection tool, click the edge of the center circle. So right here, so now we need to go back and click that direct selection tool. And here's our center circle. And once again, we're going to click the edge of it. Then you're going to click its center again. Okay. 
to select the entire circle. Then scale it again to 120%. So double click your scale tool. You want it to be uniform. You're going to type 120 and then hit OK. That's what it looks like. Apply the transform again command twice. So go to Object, Transform, Transform again, Control-D, and then one more time. You can just hit Control-D on your keyboard if you want, and that's what it should look like. So now we're going to deselect by clicking on your selection tool, click in the gray area. You want to save your work, File, Save. And then you can close your project down. Okay, so let's go back over to Canvas and make sure we're on the right page. So we continue through to page 4 slash 41. So in your book, we're going to skip forward to page 428. This one's fun. So on page 428, it says open 4 slash 9. So here's 4, 9. And then save it as heart parts. Okay, so you guys can see that I've got it saved. And then I'm going to blow up on this and make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see it better. You're going to select both the circles. So we're going to click on our selection tool. And I'm going to click and drag over both of the circles to, to make sure that I have them both selected. And then the next thing we're going to do is we need to use our Pathfinder panel. So if your Pathfinder panel is not showing, you're going to go to Window and then go down to your Pathfinder panel. Here's my Pathfinder panel. I have to drag it over. And then a hint that I told you guys is that you have to make sure that you hit alt and the directions on the on the panel tell you to do that but your book doesn't always tell you to do that so <clears throat> your book says select both the circles and then click the unite button on the pathfinder panel so let's hover until we find unite there's unite so you need to click and hold alt on your keyboard that's really important click and hold alt and then click the unite button Move the diamond shape up so that it overlaps the united circles. So click that diamond shape and you're going to move it up so that it overlaps those circles. Click the delete anchor point tool which is underneath your regular pen tool. So if you click and hold your pen tool you can click that delete anchor point tool and then delete the top anchor point of the diamond. Select all. Hold alt and then click the unite button again. Press and hold alt and now click that unite button. Remove the black stroke. So here's your stroke right here, and then you click on the little empty button to remove it. And then apply a red fill to the new object. So click on your fill, and then come over to your swatches panel and click on red. Draw a rectangle that, rectangle that covers the hole in the heart and fill it with black. So we have a black hole in our heart. So click that, let's deselect first and then click on the rectangle tool and I'm going to click and drag to create a rectangle that goes over the hole in our heart and we're going to make sure the fill is forward click on the black swatch there we go select all again press and hold alt and then click on the unite button to unite everything. We're united. Double click your scale tool. Double click that scale tool. Then apply a non-uniform. So non-uniform. Click on non-uniform. 
scale of 90% on the horizontal axis, 90. And then the vertical axis should be 100%. All right, and then hit okay. So now it's starting to look a little bit more like a heart. Okay, page four slash 29. Rotate the, the black heart shape to 100 degrees. So probably under your reflection tool is your rotation tool. Double click that rotation tool. And right here you're going to type 180%. And hit OK. Let's deselect so you can see what it looks like. It's beautiful. Select it all. I'm going to just click and drag to select it all. Then you're going to go to Object, Hide, Selection. Hide. Okay. Create a square that's 1.5 by 1.5 inches without a fill color and a one-point black stroke. So here's your fill. I'm going to click on empty. Here's the stroke. I'm going to make it black. So if you remember back to the very first lesson that we did where we had to create those squares on our basic shapes, if you click on the rectangle tool, and then just click once on your artboard, you can set the dimensions. So we're going to highlight the width and we're going to type 1.5, highlight the height, and we're going to type 1.5. And hit OK. And so here's our new square. All right, so let's deselect. Now you're going to make a circle. So click on your ellipse tool and click once on your artboard. It says create a circle that is 1.75 inches in width and height. So type 1.75. I guess I can click on here to make it uniform, to constrain the width and the height proportion, so I only have to type it once. And type 1.75. You can see it changes both of them. And hit OK. So here's my new circle. I'm going to move it over just a little bit so these two are not interacting. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to switch to the outline mode. So go to view and then outline. Move the circle so that it overlaps the square as shown in figure 36. So click on that circle and we're going to drag it down and move it so that it slightly overlaps that square. Just about like that. <clears throat> okay, to verify the circle is still selected, and now we're going to click on our reflection tool. Okay, so click on that reflection tool. Then you're going to press and hold Alt on your keyboard and click the center of the square. Okay, click the center of your square. Verify that the vertical option button right here is selected and click copy. So now we have two squares or two circles, one square. Select all. Then click the minus front button on the Pathfinder panel. So let's first figure out where the minus front is right here. Press and hold Alt on your keyboard and click the minus front. Well, let's first, we don't know if it did anything or not, so let's first go over to View and then Preview. And now you can see that it definitely did something. So it took away what was in front, which were the two circles. Okay, turning the page. Switch to the preview mode and then apply a black fill to the new object. So we've already went to the preview mode by going to view and then preview. And so now I'm going to select this new object on here. Okay, we're going to make the fill black. So click on your fill and a black swatch. We're going to go to object and show all. Then overlap the new shape 
with the black heart shape to make a spade. So come over here and click on that bottom trunk area and then move it over to the bottom of this to create a spade. Okay. Select all. Everything is selected. Press and hold Alt on your keyboard and click the Unite button. So everything is now united. It's all grouped together. Deselect. Click the Star tool. Okay, so it was underneath your rectangle or your ellipse tool. So we have our Star tool. And then click the Artboard. Enter 1 in the radius. Radius 1, 3 in the radius 2. And then 8 points. And then hit OK. And there's our beautiful new star. Apply a yellow fill. So our fill is already forward. I'm going to click on yellow and no stroke. So you can click on your stroke to make it come forward and then click on non. Use the align panel to align the center points of the two objects. So click on align. We'll see. I do not have everything selected right now, but if you click on the center align, you can see that it didn't change it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything just by clicking and dragging. And now we're going to click on that center hor on the horizontal axis. And you can see it just kind of nudged everything over. And now everything is completely aligned together. Okay? Let's deselect. So we're going to click on the black spade. So find an area where you can select the black spade without selecting the yellow star. Copy the black spade. Then paste it in front. It doesn't look like it changed, but now you have two black spades. Press and hold shift on your keyboard and select the yellow star. So I have shift pressed on my keyboard and I'm going to click the yellow star. Now everything is selected. Click the intersect shape mode button on the pathfinder panel. So click back on your pathfinder panel. And let's hover until we figure out where the intersect shape is, which is right here. Press and hold Alt on your keyboard and click that intersect shape area button. Deselect so you can see what your work looks like. So you're finished with your black spade. Make sure that you go to File, Save to save your work. And we're finished with this video.